Hey everybody, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Um, this is my first time ever really sitting in front of a camera like this and filming any sort of video like this. Um, it's something I've wanted to try out for a long time. In fact, being a YouTuber and making YouTube videos is something I kind of saw as the dream uh, for the past 10 years of my life almost. Um, and I've just never given it a shot. And... It's one of those things where I feel like if I don't at least try to just make some videos, when I get older, I'm going to look back and be like, damn, why the hell didn't I at least give that a shot? So here I am. This is me giving it a shot. And uh, I appreciate you tuning in. Um, and let's get underway with the story of how a stranger in Hawaii took me on the craziest adventure of my life. Okay, so this story takes place in 2018. Um, me... My girlfriend at the time, who's now my ex-girlfriend, who, for the sake of simplicity in the story and not repeating that every time, I'm just going to refer to us as we. Um, my sister, her husband, and my two parents, uh, we're all in Hawaii. We're in Oahu for a two-week vacation. Um, now, coming into Oahu, uh, me and my girlfriend really wanted to do the Stairway to Heaven hike. I'll put a picture of that on the screen right here for those of you who don't know what that hike is, but it is just one of the coolest, most unique hikes in the world. It is 3,922 steps of a metal staircase up the ridge of a mountain to the top to an abandoned uh, satellite bunker on the top of the mountain. So that's something we really wanted to do in Hawaii. It was actually top, very, very top of our list um, going there. And once we got there, I did a whole bunch of research on trying to figure out how we could do the Stairway to Heaven. Um, unfortunately, it is an illegal hike. The Hawaiian government has it as a very restricted hike. There's security there all the time. There's a $1,000 fine uh, if you get caught. And after doing a bunch of digging and reading people's blogs and stuff online about it, as Canadian citizens, it just didn't seem like it would be worth it, despite the fact that this was a bucket list hike for us. The fact that we would have to go to court and pay $1,000 and probably extend our stay in Hawaii in order to go to court to deal with this whole legal issue if we got caught, it just didn't seem worth it. Um, so we made the decision to just skip it and we'd make up for it by doing other cool stuff. Um, so anyway, at this point, We've stayed on the south shore of Oahu for a week, and we're going to the north shore for the second week of our holiday. Uh, but on our way there, we decided to stop for the afternoon in Honolulu, which is the biggest city in Hawaii. Now, Honolulu didn't interest us too much. Um, it's what you'd expect to find in most American cities. It's big, it's got skyscrapers, it's got malls, it's got this and that. It's also got some great beaches, but there's great beaches all over Hawaii, so we just didn't really care to spend too much time in Honolulu, uh, but we had the afternoon there, so we figured why not make the most of it. Um, so me and my girlfriend at the time, when we get to Honolulu, go searching for a vegan restaurant. Um, we find a place called The Loving Hut, and we walk there, we go there for food, sit down, get our food, all's good, and we're sitting at the table in The Loving Hut, the line is going right next to where we're sitting, and we're trying to figure out what we should do uh, while we have the afternoon in Honolulu. And at the time, this is three years ago, I wouldn't say I'm completely introverted, but I, I'm a shy kid. I was even more shy three years ago, um, especially when it came to talking to strangers. But something pulled me towards a stranger in the lineup, and that was this guy who looked like he had been probably living in the jungle. He had a giant beard, um, completely untamed, no shirt on, and just looked like a wild man. But he also looked like he knew uh, some fun stuff to do in the city. So I get his attention. He's right next to us as he's in the lineup waiting to order some food. And I ask him, or I say to him, we're in Honolulu for the afternoon. We're not from here. What's something that we could do? Uh, with the next few hours, that'd be fun. And I'm not even kidding. He looks at us. He looks me in the eyes and he says, 
Look at me, sure. Look at me, sure. I guess you don't have time to do the stairway to heaven, do you? And I was pretty shocked. Like, <laughs> excuse me? What What are the odds, first of all, this, uh, this hike that we, just a few days before, I decided we weren't going to be doing. And then we meet this stranger who's like, oh, you're not going to have time to do that. Um, so it just kind of threw us off in, right away. Uh, we were like, no, we don't have time for the stairway to heaven. Like, that's quite a long journey and we're only here for a few hours. But what do you mean? Can you elaborate? So he explains to us that he is essentially, at the time, the number one guide in the world, in Hawaii, for taking people up and down the stairway to heaven hike. That's his job. This is the business he's running, is taking people on guided hikes up and down uh, and avoiding the security and the legal issues that come with the hike. So, of course, this uh, drew our interest in as it was something we really, really wanted to do. And he ended up sitting with us and we had lunch with him and we talked and he showed us videos from the hike. And he invited us to come on the hike with him that Friday. This was on a Tuesday or Wednesday when we had met him. We went our separate ways after and we had a lot to consider. This was a complete stranger, looked, not to judge a book by a cover, looked a little crazy, in a restaurant with no shirt on, which it is Hawaii, I guess we're just not used to that being from Canada, but do we trust this man? So Friday comes around, we're at the grocery store, we're meeting the other people on the hike, um, all is going well, and... The mountain man, who's the guy who's taking us up, he comes over to us in a group and he says, how would you all feel about spending the night at the top of the mountain? And this really um, was a moment of like, my initial gut instinct was like, nah. No, 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 hell no. I don't really, I don't, I don't trust that. I... What do you mean spend the night at the top of the mountain? Are we going to be carrying the supplies up? Just so many questions going through my head and so much doubt. Um, but we kind of, he left us alone, chatted over as a group. And there was all in all eight people he was going to be taking up the mountain. And two of them said they weren't able to spend the night at the top. But the rest of us, the other six, decided that we would. Um, we didn't really know what we were in for. We didn't know how we were going to spend the night at the top, but we committed to it. So now, on to the adventure. So we're now with a group of strangers. There's me and my girlfriend, six other people who will be doing the hike with us who also signed up, the mountain man who will be guiding us up, and his assistant who's there for the month to help him guide people up and down, help carry stuff, etc. So all together, ten people who will be doing the journey. We have no cell service, no SIM card, because we're in the U.S. and we're from Canada, no way of contacting our family or friends. Uh, we're with a group of strangers who we've all met for the first time that day. It's one of those moments where you think, what what could go wrong? Foolproof, right? No, Nothing could go wrong. Well, we'll see. So, from the grocery store, we get an Uber. Now, the Uber seats six people, and we have a group of ten. Plus, the driver of the Uber makes eleven. We were only going to take one Uber. So the mountain man bribes our Uber driver to allow him to take 10 people in his car that has seats for five, uh, which we jam in. We get all our gear in. It's obviously a very tight fit. And he takes us on the highway. And the spot where we have to start the journey is at a spot on the highway where there's not really an area to pull over. It's just before a tunnel. Um, and there's not really a shoulder of the road. There's a guardrail, uh, but it doesn't give you the full area to pull over. Well, we rapidly jump out of the uh, vehicle, get all our gear, chuck it over the guardrail, and then we also have to jump over the guardrail so he can drive off and no one gets caught because this is illegal. And if a cop was coming, they likely would have stopped and stopped us from doing the hike. Um, this all goes smoothly, fortunately. We're over the guardrail and we're down into the Hawaiian jungle. Now at this part, at this point, we're walking single file through the jungle and we get down to a road that's a former military road. 
and it's kind of abandoned, like it's all overgrown. There's a few little like uh, structures along it, but it's obviously not used anymore. And we're walking single file and I'm at the back and the mountain man tells me, keep an eye on our six, keep checking behind you every 20 seconds. Or if you hear anything, just be constantly aware. And if you hear or see anything, you let us know and we all take off into the woods and we will figure out a way to regroup, but we're not getting caught. So we're just taking off into the woods as individuals. Fortunately, obviously this is pretty anxiety provoking, just literally constantly having the head on a swivel and uh, looking through the jungle to see if there's any security, which fortunately there wasn't, but we made it through this part. There wasn't any need to run into the jungle. And then we're approaching the stairs. Now there's a vehicle at the road at the bottom of the stairs, which has a security guard in it, which our mountain man goes up. This was his 250th hike up to the top, by the way. We were his 250th group that he took up. He goes to the vehicle, talks to the security for a bit while we were kind of hiding in the woods. He comes back, gets us, the vehicle drives away, and we go through the fence. No trespassing, danger, there is fines for doing this, signs all around. We go through the fence, and up we go. And So we're through the fence, we're past the security, and we are now on the first step of the stairway to heaven with 3,922 steps to go. Uh, now, to be honest, it's not the most difficult hike because it's a staircase. Uh, it's not like you're trekking through the jungle, bushwhacking and all that. Um, but there is parts, especially in the first half, that are quite steep. It's almost like a ladder that you're climbing up with rungs instead of a staircase. Um, so we're going up step, 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 maybe taking a break every 200 steps or so because it was pretty damn hot. And we get to the halfway point where it's this kind of flat platform where you can just look back on the stairs coming up. You get a view of the highway down below, um, which I'll put a picture of here because it's pretty amazing seeing how far you made it at this point. Um, the highway is going into uh, into a mountain. There's a tunnel and the highway just goes right into the mountain, which looks like this. Just amazing views from the halfway point. And at this point, it starts getting really cloudy. So we're just taking pictures, uh, having some laughs, talking a bit more. And it turns out one of the women we're doing the hike with, Violetta, shout out to Violetta if you're watching this, I don't think you will be, but you never know. Um, and at the time, she was dating Ansel Elgort, who is the main actor in the movie Baby Driver. And she happened to have his camera. Pretty cool. I didn't know she dated Ansel Elgort at this time. She just said, yeah, I have my boyfriend's camera. And she was letting me take pictures on it because I'm into photography. And it was a really cool camera. It was like, a, I'll put a picture up right here because I took a picture of it. And we start our journey up to the top of the mountain. And at this point, we're climbing through the clouds. There's parts where we're walking along the ridge of the mountain. You look down the side, the drop off on either side of the ridge and it goes about 20 feet and then it's just cloud and you have no idea how far that drop off goes down. Obviously there's railing, so it's not too scary, but it is a little uneasy looking down and just seeing that if, if somehow you fall, you're just tumbling into the clouds and you're gone. Um, so we keep journeying up, nothing too exciting happens on the way up and we get to the top and there's this World War II bunker um, which was built so that after Pearl Harbor, Hawaii would be able to communicate, the U.S. military would be able to send signals out easier uh, since it's at the top of a mountain in the middle of the island, whereas before they just had stations all around. And this bunker is where we would be spending the night. But the inside was muddy, it was wet, there was bottles everywhere, and it did not look like the type of place you uh, really wanted to sleep. So we're kind of just exploring, getting a feel for it, and the mountain man and his assistant come from behind the bunker. I don't know where they were coming from, but they had these two giant plastic cases that were clearly, clearly had been buried in the ground. Now these two cases had all the supplies we would need for a relatively comfortable night in that bunker, including wine, 
food, a camping stove, an inflatable raft, um, roses, a plastic tarp to put down over the base of the bunker. So then after he brought these out, we got to work. These are two cases, by the way, which he has buried up there so that when he brings groups up, he can make it comfortable for them and make it more of a full experience. Um, so we start cleaning it out. We're dust, like brooming the floors to get as much mud out as possible. We put the plastic sheet down, we get it all set up and it's, it's pretty cozy once we get that all set up. Um, we blow up this mattress, which is actually a raft for like lakes. I think it's probably meant for five or six people. We were sleeping eight on it. Uh, it was very uncomfortable, but it did do for the night. Uh, we split, share lots of wine, share stories, and it was just a crazy night. Also, just imagining where we were at the top of this mountain in this little bunker in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Just pretty, pretty crazy. Um, so then we go to bed, get our rest in, probably sleep like four hours. We wake up at 4.30 so we can see the sunrise. Uh, and the mountain man is making us French toast in the morning. We're all kind of sitting around, getting warm from the fire, from the camping stove. He's cooking up the French toast. And this pair of hikers walks in at 4.30 in the morning who would come up to see the sunrise from the top. And they thought they walked in on some Charles Manson cult-like activities. <laughs> so it's seven of us younger people sitting around, this dude, still shirtless, still with this crazy beard, covered in mud, cooking up some French toast in this bunker at the top of this mountain. And it really, I mean, I understand where these people were coming from when they said they thought they walked in on a cult. Uh, they thought we might have been all, like, juiced up on acid and the mountain man had given it to us so that he could brain control us and come live on this bunker on the top of this mountain. Fortunately, they stuck around long enough for us to explain that we actually voluntarily uh, signed up for this. We paid money for this experience and uh, not to call the authorities or anything. Don't be weirded out. We trust him. He's our guide. He's our Sherpa um, and all is well. Uh, and we ended up doing the hike down with those people and talking with them. So that was all good. And uh, yeah, that essentially concludes the adventure. We hike back down. We get to the halfway point for sunrise. There's this beautiful yellow glow coming through the clouds. Um, we go to the bottom. The rest of that day, we kind of trek through the woods because we took a different way of getting out of the hike than the way we came in. We went swimming in a waterfall. Um, and it was just an experience I will never forget. People I will never forget. And I'm so happy that the stars aligned for me to be able to experience that because it truly was special and it truly did seem like it was meant to happen. Now, before I wrap up, there's two things I want to briefly touch on, and that is getting outside of your comfort zone and synchronicities. So in my opinion, this experience, as well as many others that I've experienced in life, the best things, the things you'll remember the most, the things that will change you positively the most the things that you will meet make the strongest connections with people through are all things that come through getting outside of your comfort zone there's something about breaking your normal routine breaking the neural pathways you have set in your brain that associate certain things with fear and getting out and doing those things embracing the discomfort coming out on the other side and you reap so much from that embracing of discomfort and going through stuff that if you had the choice, you wouldn't want to go through. But because you know you're going to come out on the other side, you choose to go through. Those experiences are what I live for. And if you haven't done something like that in a while and you're watching this, I encourage you to do something small or large that you've wanted to do, but you haven't because it's uncomfortable you feel anxiety towards it, you feel fear towards it, it's going to be painful, anything like that, do it. Just do it, see how you feel after, and you never know what might come from it. And the second part is the synchronicity uh, of how this event happened, where it's something I wanted to do, 
so bad, like literally top of the bucket list. Do the research, do the preparation just to find out it's not going to be doable. Back to square one. And then the universe sends down the mountain man to meet us at that restaurant and reach out with his hands, give us the option. Do you still want to do this thing at the top of your bucket list? It's now your choice, yes or no. And thank God that happened because... It was just the most powerful experience and met some of the most amazing people. And now we get to share it with all you guys. Um, but yeah, just keep an eye out for the synchronicities and things that are pulling you towards them or the things that you feel are being pushed towards you in life. Because sometimes those are the things you need to latch on to, to take you to who you truly are or to take you to where you truly need to be. Thank you so much for watching. I know it's a little long, the story, but it's fun. It was an adventure. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please drop a like on the video. Helps out with getting this video shared. Um, if you have suggestions for stuff you want to see from me in the future, please comment it down below. I'll be making more story videos like this about cool things I've done in my life. Probably be making some adventure videos too. I don't really know exactly where I'm going to be going with this, but I'm going to try and make a video every week. Uh, for the next foreseeable bit of the future. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think. Thanks for tuning in. Cheers. See you in the next one.